My name is Malte Drescher. I'm professor for physical chemistry at the Department of Chemistry at the University of Konstanz. There are four main research topics in Konstanz and one of them is chemical biology. And chemical biology is exactly the topic which is important for us because we are dealing with spectroscopy in complex uh, systems and um, we are using electron paramagnetic resonance spectroscopy to study for instance, biomacromolecules in complex environments like the living cell. We use um, electron paramagnetic resonance spectroscopy and um, EPR spectroscopy relies um, on unpaired electrons. They can be detected. Unfortunately, many proteins do not contain um, unpaired electrons, though there is no uh, EPR signal. But this can be turned into an advantage because we can label the protein with spin labels and they can be detected via EPR and these spin labels act as reporters and um, so we can learn a lot about, um, for example, the protein structure, its dynamics about microenvironment like polarity or solvent accessibility. We are um, already collaborating with Bruker for a long time, so for example we um, developed a X-band ProPad for EPR imaging and um, Roughly one year ago, Peter Höfer from Bruker Biospin offered us um, the opportunity to become beta tester for the Nano EMX Benchtop EPR spectrometer. And yeah, we um, gladly accepted this offer. And uh, now we are working with this um, Benchtop spectrometer. And um, this gives us the possibility to also include our biochemists um, in the group directly into the EPR experiments. The main feature of the Nano EMX is that it's easy to use, but still gives a lot of flexibility in planning and performing own experiments. And this is um, owing to the software, which is really easy to handle. And this gives the opportunity also to biochemists, uh, who are not experts in spectroscopy, to use the spectrometer. And um, one example is uh, a project where we use um, spin-labeled ligands in order to study the mechanistic details of protein ligand binding. In my work I do EPR spectroscopy mainly on biological samples and especially on proteins. I am very much interested in investigating protein ligand interactions which are of course very important in, in uncountable biological processes such as signaling or inflammation processes and much more of course. For our approach we use spin labeled tailored ligands which are synthesized by a group from the chemistry department at our university here. And we add them to a solution of protein. And of course, if a ligand binds to the protein, the mobility of the spin label on the ligand will change. It will be reduced. Um, with EPR spectroscopy, we monitor the changes of the spin label mobility. And thus, we get insight into the molecular mechanism of ligand protein binding. The EMX Nano offers a fully automated tuning procedure and additionally the spectrometer software offers you the possibility to do basic data analysis steps directly at the measurement computer. So if I take a step back and do not look just at my project but at what all the people in our group do, I see that almost every single sample that is prepared in our lab undergoes continuous wave expand EPR spectroscopy at room temperature as a first experiment. This is either to check if we were able to prepare an EPR active sample or if we had success in a spin labeling reaction. So we really need this method to get important information about our samples. This is a lot of samples we're talking about, so we need a spectrometer that is quick, that is convenient to handle, that is comfortable in use and that is also very reliable. So in our group, a lot of people work with biological samples where we are often limited by yeah, the amount of protein available, the solubility of a protein available. So many times we have to deal with low sample concentrations. So we need a spectrometer which has a high sensitivity and since Low sample concentration in turn mean that we often have to do long averaging. We also need high stability in a spectrometer. I like a lot the function which enables reference-free spin counting at the EMX Nano. So with this function you can 
from one single EPR spectrum determine the concentration of electron spins in your sample. We use this function for determining the labeling efficiency after a spin labeling reaction, for example, but you can use it in many other contexts and it's really easy and so helpful. Although the EMX Nano is simple to use, it still provides a technical means to perform all experiments that are relevant in the field of chemical biology. So we are um, interested in um, proteins, for example, and um, in former times, um, structure determination of proteins um, was done in the test tube or even the crystal in terms of X-ray um, uh, structure determination. But um, now it becomes clear that um, many proteins adapt their conformation depending on the macromolecular context. So, for example, the famous uh, Parkinson protein alpha synuclein um, adapts different conformations depending whether there are membranes or other proteins um, close by. So it is very useful to um, study the protein in the natural environment in the cell. And um, this cannot be done with conventional techniques and that is the reason why we develop um, in-cell EPR um, techniques to look um, at the protein in its physiological context. There is um, a very important class of proteins which is called intrinsically disordered proteins and um, these intrinsically disordered proteins um, adapt their conformation depending on the macromolecular context. So um, there is not much use to study these IDPs, these intrinsically disordered proteins, in a test tube but we have to study them in their um, cellular context and that is the reason why in-cell EPR is very important. In the future, I see that the EMX Nano really has the potential to open up the field of EPR. I think uh, work groups from the field of biology, life sciences, material sciences, they all have research questions that are perfect to be answered by EPR spectroscopy. And the EMX Nano is easy to use. It is convenient to handle and so also people who are not experts in spectroscopy they will be happy to do EPR with the help of the EMX Nano. The main advantage of um, EPR spectroscopy in combination with site directed spin labeling is that it's virtually background free so it can be applied in complex environments for example the living cell and um, this is the way uh, for the future um, we will develop tailored approaches for spin labeling in vivo and yeah, I think this is the direction the entire community will go and I hope that we will contribute to that.